So the goal here is to um, remove the infrared filter off this little uh, camera. It's a Logitech it's a, a C920. They're great because they have a little camera mount on the bottom, which makes them easy to put into activity boxes. But uh, the problem is that they have an uh, infrared filter, so you can't use them to see in the dark. So uh, I've already started on this one, but the, the first step that you want to do is get these speaker covers off. So uh, over here on e either side, there's uh, usually a black kind of rubbery looking sticker. And underneath that is a thicker plastic sticker. So once you scrape off the rubberiness, that part's usually pretty easy. And then I use a flathead screwdriver to get underneath that thicker plastic sticker. And sometimes you can kind of poke it in a hole and just, you just need to get some purchase. And once you get it lifted up, it'll come off. The thing that really helps with this whole process is to have a um, toolkit that has like a small Phillips head screwdriver. I just bought this one off Amazon's Tecton uh, electronic kit. And um, the Phillips head screwdriver on it, this bit is size double zero, zero, zero. So that's really helpful to have. And then also just some flat head screwdrivers. So first you take the stickers off and then second go in and take out the four screws. There's two on either side. And then the next part is the really um, not very graceful at all part where you just sort of force these things off. The speaker cover is held on by a little tab here at the top. And you can't really get good access to that tab because it's really protected by the speaker cover. So I'm sure that there's some type of tool that you could use to you know reach through and sort of pop this thing open. But the speakers themselves have a the covers have a felt inside. So I tried getting in there with a the paper clip or something and that didn't really work. So what I tend to do is I take a flathead screwdriver and there's the two screw holes where I just remove the screws and then there's this flat bit. So I go into the flat bit and then just try and get around the edge of the cover and lift it. And then that gives you a little bit of a, of a crack there that you can reach in with a second screwdriver and just start prying and this part is, you know, like I said, not at all graceful. And I've tried sort of twisting in different ways, but the my main goal is to not stab myself in the hand as I do this, but you just sort of push it and it pops loose. These two covers are symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which one is which. Um, but I'll, I'll set them aside over here. So now, uh, and this thing has just a bazillion screws in it. So we're going to take out these four screws on either side. So that's eight screws to take off uh, you know, this clear plate in the front. And then once that's off, then we can take off the others underneath to then start to open the thing up. So again, I'll use this double zero size uh, Phillips head screwdriver. And try and where are we over here? This is all like the exciting part of unscrewing. Now these screws are in surprisingly tight, so I um, tend to try to be really careful when you start them because they strip really easily. So like that, you can hear it just really tight. And if you strip them, which I have done, <laughs> Uh, and you know that you can reach underneath this point and lift and eventually um, so this is just sort of like the mid this midpoint here you can lift there and it'll eventually fatigue and break off the plastic but you just want to be careful not to break this front piece which is seems like it's glass When I'm just talking about the importance of not stripping it. I was going a little fast and felt that one starting to strip. So I'll slow down this one, use a lot of kind of downward pressure on it. And once it starts going, then I can go a little faster. There we 
to go. Didn't strip it too badly, but again, like you don't want to have to deal with having to drill these little tiny screws out or break the camera. One of the best things about these cameras is that they're now they cost about seventy dollars, so they're they are replaceable as if needed. But uh, you don't want to. Nice little magnetic tips on the screwdriver help to pick up these screws. And then I'm placing them on this mat that came with this kit that the um, with the screwdrivers. And so it's nice, it has all these different bits and also this magnetic uh, mat. And it's just great for just shoving the screws onto. Alright, so now I've taken off the eight screws and this piece should lift off really easily. So I'll put that over here my, with my trophies. So now we look inside and the first thing we notice is, you know, well, I don't know, whatever you might notice, but here's the, there's the, the camera and the speakers on either side, but there's microphones, actually. I'm saying there's speakers for some reason, but they're microphones. Um, four screws here and a fifth screw right in the middle. So we'll take those out now. And this part is interesting because these screws are a different size than the other ones that we've had so far. They're a little bit thicker and shorter. So again, it helps just to have a little place to stack them all up. And I had thought that maybe you could do this without taking the base off, but you can't. You have to take the base off. They really made these cameras such that you just have to disassemble like everything. And I'm sorry that I keep drifting off the edge of the table with it. And of course I've got autofocus going, which is not ideal either. Focus on the pen, there we go. I hope this will be helpful if not the best quality video. So now the four screws are loose from the bracket uh, so that just lifts away and then now the thing's much less clunky without that big heavy base piece. So next I'm going to remove this center screw down here and once that's out then the rest of this whole casing will come out because it's held in by these four screws in the corner that we've already taken out and then this fifth one here in the middle, the center screw. This is another one of these kind of long, thin screws. But I still like to keep them all separated. And so at this point, it's kind of it's a little wedged in there, and so I'll pull it out a little bit on the outer part as I rock the um, this inner bit out. You can also kind of hook a fingernail or screwdriver around the edge, but now this bracket lifts loose, and you can see the printed circuit card underneath. And so... First off, you know, good news, printed circuit card, and then bad news, focus doesn't look great, but I mean, it's a little close for this webcam, but um, there we go. So here's our lens, the sensors behind it, and you would think, or at least I would think, that this is your infrared lens right here, and so when I first started doing this, I tried to pop that off, but that's not it. The infrared filter is behind the array, uh, behind the lens, right in front of the array. So these little uh, microphone covers can come off, and they're just stuck on with some friction. They're kind of a rubbery silicone stuff. There are three screws here to remove. There's one down here, and I think there are two here. There's, yeah, one down at the bottom, so those are kind of uh, symmetrical, and then there's one up here. So I'll take those three out, and then at that point, I think there's only two more screws to go after this. It's just insane how many screws this little tiny camera has in it. But again, here it's just good to have a good Phillips head screwdriver set, because if you're using the wrong size, you really have to push down a lot. And, um, and what I had done a lot, too, is resort to using flathead screwdrivers just to try to get the job done. And, um, and then you end up breaking the screwdrivers, uh, trying to force them into these Phillips head screws. Or at least that's what I did. And these are also like a smaller stubby screw. So it's good if you can keep these in separate piles. Uh, these four up here, the four that were holding the 
the microphone covers on. These are the eight that are all, um, they seem like they're the same size that, that were underneath the microphone covers. The four that held on the, the, the kind of camera mount bracket, this was that center screw, and then these are the three underneath. So now <clears throat> it's going to be a similar kind of um, process of rocking this thing out. It's really mounted all the way on the back here. And so there's a couple ways you can do it. You know, one would be to disconnect the camera. <clears throat> but I don't like to do that because I just, you know, think less less you disconnect the better. And so again, kind of flexing it out a little bit. Also, this nice big wire is tucked really pretty tightly. And so what you end up getting is some friction there, the sort of pinch point of the printed circuit card around the wire. So I try to lift that free and kind of, you know, rock it loose a bit. So I'm going to use a um, you know decent sized flathead screwdriver here to kind of lift up the one side and lift up the other side and then just kind of work it back and forth being you know conscious of delicate circuitry um, but also this big fat wire so another trick that seems to help is to get a little bit of slack on the wire so it's wrapped around the the camera and so if you just kind of lift it up, that eases a bit of the tension. And then, uh, you know, it's one of these things where it kind of goes very slowly and then and then very quickly. So yeah, here I can feel it coming up. And again, it's just, you know, trying to not force anything and just be, be easy with it. we go. So now <clears throat> printed circuit card is loose. Again, you know, you could disconnect the whole thing, <clears throat> but I, I just worry about these little fiddly connections. So the next thing we have is, of course, two more screws that are holding the, the lens in place. And so these are small screws that have like a kind of a washer built into them, a little flange. And now that these are out, I mean, they seriously, they put this thing at the back of the camera. It's like they really just didn't want you to get to it. <clears throat> now that those are out, we're really almost actually finally there. So the there are four posts that are made of this plastic material that the, the lens kind of casing is made out of. And they go around these two you can save these two down here are going to end up breaking because on the front end there's a lot of solder so these big important looking leads are soldered on here so we don't want to break that so what i do is i go from the side opposite the solder and just rock it forward and this is the part where i get really nervous but it pops forward and then now you're looking through the back side of the camera and finally after a long wait, this blue tinted bit here is our infrared filter. So I'll again use kind of a thin flathead screw driver and pick a corner and I'll just pry loosely because it's pretty flush with this circle. It's made of this plasticky material. And so the trick is to break the glue that's holding it in without shattering the filter, uh, which again is kind of fiddly business, but Often what ha happens is you end up kind of cracking it at the corners. But, you know, you just kind of say to yourself at this point, hey, this is a $70 webcam. Everything's going to be okay. I'm kind of chipping that edge up a bit more than I wanted to, but I can see the glue is also releasing. And best not to force it. I'm sorry again, my camera work is not the best, but this is not for broad distribution. I'm really stressing this solder, so I'm going to try and adjust. Ooh. Uh-oh. I might have done that one in. We'll see whether this one still works. I really kind of flex that one more than I normally would.
Okay, because I'm holding it at this awkward angle. But we'll see. Maybe I'll have to do a little bit of soldering when this is done. All right, so you can hear a little crackle and the filter now is loose. So there's our, our prize, this little tiny piece of glass. I can't tell whether my contacts are still good, but I really I just want to try to get this guy back into place. So you just reseat those four posts like you had before. And then before much more ado, I will reattach these little screws in the back here and try and get it back together. Again, pretty concerned at the amount that I flexed that solder earlier. But what's nice about this is you can test it out as you go. You can just use, you know, the Logitech um, recording, you know, quick capture software and uh, use that to see how your, your camera's working. So we'll see if this one works at all. But <clears throat> I'm going to tuck it back in and then I just want to show you one more thing. I'll rearrange, but that let the wire go through the, the gap. Kind of tweak the plastic a bit. Shove the wire down out of the way, and then now I can do things in reverse. And as usual, when you're sort of putting things back together, it can go faster than taking it apart. Especially because the screws are not in crazy tight, and I'm not going to put them in crazy tight because I don't. Uh, I'm not the, the robot at the factory or whatever. Mainly I just want to keep dust from getting in here, so I will put most, if not all, the screws back in. All right, so now it's kind of coming back together. So these microphone covers have like a little tab on them that needs to be sticking um, out, you know, laterally. And then this cover can go on, just line up the screw hole and just kind of, again, a little bit of rocking and rolling to get it in there. And it just, it wants to pop in. It seats itself really nicely when it's where it wants to be. All right, and then we'll put the center screw in. And then the deal that's really important um, is that now that the the filters removed, it messes with the optics of the camera and, and disturbs its autofocus. So you may see that there are, there's the lens and around it there are four tabs that stick out radially. And what you want to do is grab this lens and rotate it one quarter turn clockwise. If not, the camera will still work. It'll just look uh, blurry. So I'm just gonna grab it loosely here, a twist. Quarter turn, and that's good. And what would be good at this point, if you have one of these that you're messing with, is to just plug it into the USB in your, in your computer and preview how it's working. Uh, you notice that it has a, um, a pinkish uh, tinge to it when you uh, look at it on uh, through the computer because that infrared filter is now removed. And uh, that whole purpose of the infrared filter is to cut down on this extra light that we don't really need. and give you a sharper webcam image. But what we want is no filter so that we can run this thing in the dark using an infrared array that are really cheap to buy on Amazon or Newegg or wherever. There are quite a few of them out there. It's nice that the infrared arrays, they go through plexiglass, even the black plexiglass, if it's, I think, an eighth of an inch or thinner, it's uh, you can see through it with infrared, so it's handy stuff. These little cameras again, you know, they're just it's so much more convenient to buy them, uh, you know, pre with the uh, the filter off. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and test this one out before I put it together all the way. But you just pop this 
sucker on, put the four screws in either side, and then just use a bit of um, you know downward pressure and these microphone covers will snap right back into place. And then sort of optional at that point if you want to put those first four screws back in. I do again just to try and keep dust out of the thing. But that's the, the basic process for getting this little tiny infrared uh, filter out. But that's that's the prize, this little tiny bit of glass that's hidden in the back and um, does a good job at making a sharper image normally, but also blocks our, our infrared arrays, making it so these cameras can't work in the dark unless you pop it out. But yeah, that's uh, you know what I've learned doing a few of these, and uh, I hope it's useful.